What's going on guys and welcome to another Wex Online Masterclass. We've just arrived here at Donington Park today and I'm going to teach you all about motorsport photography. We're here on a no limits track day and the weather, as you can see, is perfect for us. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. So I got into it, started in shooting public slide. I got my dad to take me to a lot of events, borrowed my granddad's camera, then got my own camera and just built it up over the years. Practiced and practiced, built up my portfolio at different events. And then one day I was given a break. And yeah, so it sort of all just went from there really. So yeah, here we are today at Donington Park for one of the No Limits track days, which is slightly different from a No Limits race round. With the racing you have, well obviously racing, but on a track day it's just where people come and ride the track. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how I go about my day today um, and just really show you what I do on a track day. And hopefully that you guys will learn a few tips and tricks here and there. So before we go on track, I'm gonna talk you through my camera bag. So to start with, we've got my main camera and my main lens, which is the Sony A9 and the Sony 200 to 600 mil, f 5.6 to 6.3. Now this lens and this camera setup combined are basically what I get most of my shots with. It's such a good combination. The autofocus on this camera is phenomenal and the sharpness from this lens is off the charts. So put one and one together and you're gonna have a, a good batch of success. If I was to say, to get into motorsport photography, what the goal would be for a certain lens is this. Obviously, I know a lot of you don't have the budget to get this set up straight away, but over the years, if you build it up and build it up, I'd say this is the setup that you'd want to aim for. There's also a piece of kit which is currently missing from my camera bag, Sony's 70-200 f2.8 version 2. It's the one they've just released. On a track date, usually I'd bring it, but on a track like Donington, where there's only really one spot which it could be used for, I thought, well, let's leave it at home today and just spend the day shooting with the 200-600. As for motorsports, you kind of want that flexibility and that reach. You don't really want to be shooting with a wide angle when you're trackside. You want to be as close into the bikes as you can be, sort of thing, and using as low a stop as possible to sort of separate them from the background. And uh, speaking of wide angles, we then move on to my wide angle lens, which is a 16mm to 35mm f2.8, again from Sony, the G Master lens. Uh, this is a great wide angle, um, it allows you a lot of flexibility. I tend to shoot a lot of my podium stuff with this during the race rounds or the briefing photos with this or sort of in the endurance race when bikes come in for a changeover. I'll typically use this lens to get low to the ground and uh, make the bikes look quite big. The body on this one is a Sony A3. And this camera is again used for the pit lane stuff, it's more for portraiture rather than on track stuff. Uh, that's where the A9 really excels compared to this. It's still a really, really good camera though. Uh, I'm not slating this in any way. The low light capabilities of this are phenomenal. So if I were to shoot uh, a nightclub, for example, or a wedding, this would be my go-to lens. Uh, uh, my go well, yeah, my go-to lens and my go-to camera body, whereas that is more built for, for motorsports. But it's always good to keep a backup body on you just in case something were to go wrong with the main body. Finally, the Sony Flash. This, again, I don't really use that often because it's not really something that you should use when you're photographing people trackside as it can cause a distraction which could cause um, some safety questions for the riders because obviously if you're going at 100 mile an hour and you see this bright flash it's going to catch your eye so you kind of don't want to be using a flash because it's a big health and safety hazard. I typically use this for briefing photos to do some stationary bike shots um, so if I had to do like a livery reveal I'd get this on but being in the paddock it's rare that I'll use a flash um, so yeah, I just have it with me just in case someone would say, look, I've got this new bike, really, really want a photo of it, can you do it? The answer to that is yes, I'll hook that up to that and uh, use a wide angle or the 70 to 200, which I run, which I mentioned earlier. And also there's this uh, quirky little thing. This is called a, a rocket or a pipette, depending on where you're from. And this is used, so if you were to change your lens, give your sensor a quick, blast and uh, it'll get rid of any dust off your off your sensor or off your mirror sort of thing and it just keeps it all all clean so if you're taking photos of anything and you start to mix a few black spots on your, your photos and you're thinking what's this doing and there's nothing on your lens it could be just on your sensor so you get one of these give it a spray and uh, jobs are gotten and yeah that is what's inside my camera bag other than the Manfrotto monopod which is a key part to motorsport photography because it helps you with the stability um, so it'll help rest you rest your lens on it so it takes some of the weight off your shoulders and off your neck which over a day's shooting is a godsend really um, so you're not aching as badly and then obviously there's the spare batteries spare SD cards also in there that's my setup 
So when it comes to permission for getting track side, there's a few things you need to take into account. You have to be shooting for a publication or a magazine, or you've got to be an official for the certain uh, company that are running it. There's also the liability insurance which you need, and that has to be five million or above. Uh, for your own safety and for, well, for just insurance, because we all have to have it. Um, if you're a public side, you can't automatically expect to get media side just because you're taking photos of a specific rider. You have to have a few things in place for that. They're the key parts of what you need to get media side. You've got to be above 18, you've got to have the 5 million plus liability insurance, and you have to be shooting for a magazine or a publication or be an official photographer for that um, company that is doing the event. How I became the official photographer for No Limits was sort of over the space of a couple of years. Uh, I started as a member of the public, um, being brought in by someone, um, asked to work with them, but because I wasn't 18, I had to stay public side. Um, I was then building up and building up my portfolio, um, getting to know the, the officials, um, like the CEOs, the guy who runs the social media. Uh, we built up a connection, um, I started to send them content, they were starting to use it and then um, it just started to, to go from there really. By the end of my first year working with them, I was asked by them to become one of their official photographers. Um, I was able to be media side at that point. And then the following year, I was asked to do some track days um, as well as the racing. And then it just sort of, I did more events and more events from there and just built up, built up, built up my relationship with them and kept providing the content. And, and yeah, it sort of, just went from there really. So that's all the sort of talking done for, for now. Uh, now we're gonna go shoot on track and, and go get the shots that I've just been telling you about. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is take a few random shots, like that. So that when I come to go through at the end of the day, I'll know where the day starts. At the end of this session, I'll do it again and then so on and so forth throughout the rest of the day. That way there, it splits the groups up into two, se well, into distinct sections. Uh, so when it comes to organising, I'll just look for the, the random shots of either the sky, the ground, the track, anything. And then there'll be a load of bikes and then there'll be more sky shots. The bikes are on track now and they're coming around for their sighting laps. I won't shoot the first couple of laps because uh, they're just going to be going around slow and steady. But after the instructor goes in and lets the riders go free, that's when I'll start shooting. During the sighting laps, it's also a great opportunity to see what sort of bikes we've got on show, the amount of different colours, so when it comes to organising, when I go for black bikes, blue bikes, red bikes, I'll, know, I'll have a rough idea of which bikes are going to be more heavily weighted. For example, black bikes might be more than white bikes. And as some of you may have noticed, I've got something in my ear now. That's a bit of a, an ear protector, so that when I turn around and start facing the bikes, there's naturally going to be the left side of my ear on show to the track, so I thought by putting something in it, it'll protect it a bit more than it does. So that's a, a big tip that I'd give you guys. Always wear some ear protection. You can always take it out if you've got it, but you can't put it in if you don't have it. So I learned that the hard way. Um, it was one of them, I was at an event where I wished I had some ear protection because my, my right ear was actually taking a fair beating because I was really close to the track and bikes were screaming past quite literally. And Every now and then, I still get a bit of a ringing in it. So it's sort of something that I've learned the hard way, um, but it's something that I've learned from. So it's something that I've put measures in place now to protect uh, myself for. So I always coming up, I was like, nah, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. But in reality, your ears don't stand a chance when you're exposed to loud noise for such an extensive period of time. It will naturally take its toll on it, so. So one of the main reasons why I decided to start shooting my day at the penultimate corner, uh, as some of you bike fans may know it as the Melbourne Loop, is because the sun rises just there. So if I was to shoot into the sun, a lot of the bikes would become silhouettes or, or really dark and you wouldn't really get that much colour in them. Whereas if you shoot with the sun hitting the bikes, you can obviously see all the colour um, and that way there, the bikes look like bikes rather than silhouettes. Um, I tend to shoot with plus 0.3% exposure compensation as well, just to give me that extra bit of a boost, especially around the, the shadow sort of stuff. So I can't always shoot with the sun behind me. That's just um, a given. But I like to try and have it behind me. So with that plus 0.3% exposure compensation, it also helps brighten up so that when the image is going to post, it's one less thing to think about is the shadows. Um, because obviously I've already got my normal preset, which does that for me but it also helps um, so you don't have to go at say plus 100% on the shadows, which can make the image quite wishy-washy sort of thing. So with that plus 0.3% compensation, 
it just helps that little bit. It's not imperative, but it's just something that I've learned over the past couple of years, which has just helped me out. So it's not a necessity, but it's user preference at the end of the day. So that's the outside of the, the Melbourne loop done, uh, the pool to the corner. We've now moved on the inside of it for the next set of sessions. Um, so really the riders get a bit of variety to get the outside on the inside of the corner. Uh, it's a bit different camera settings from the outside. On the outside, I was using a slightly faster shutter speed around 500th, uh, especially on the corner exit, so I could get the, the action shots of the, the wheelie sort of thing. Um, when it was on the actual apex, it was around the, well, anything between 250 and 400-ish. Uh, uh, just depending on the sort of shot I was after. Now we're on the infield, um, again there's a couple of different variety of shots. There's this one where I'm going to be looking up towards the exit of the chicane to get the riders coming at me. Um, and then there's also that corner down there which is a loop so I get them on the inside and get the inside shot where hopefully the riders will get the knee down. That's the sort of shot that these riders were after, um, ones which make them look, look fast, look good. Um, so yeah that's what my, my goal is for this. Obviously not every rider will get the, the knee down, um, some are more cautious than others. So it's a case of lowering the shutter speed and making them still look quick with a bit of motion blur. And that's a skill here. Uh, usually I use centre focus, but I've just changed it to, to zone focus with um, different focus points, uh, just to see the difference. Uh, I don't usually do this, but I thought why not give it a bit of an experiment. And so far it seems to be working perfectly. The entire of the bike is focused the same as it was before. So. Um, it just gives me a bit more security so sometimes with the, the centre focus where I can move it around um, with a little dial uh, it would uh, lose the focus at the back of the bike which I noticed so I thought today I'd try uh, putting it in zone focus so they get the whole focus points so I've just done that now and the entire of the bike seems to be focused so yeah on for a winner. Because it's such a warm day we're getting quite a lot of heat aids now um, so when you're shooting it like 600 mil you're trying to shoot through the heat aids, it's quite difficult to keep the bikes in focus and sometimes they go a bit fuzzy. So to solve that, I just use a slightly higher f-stop to, to make the focus go a bit more and that's the way around it. So, but as you can see, very warm day. Um, so when I'm running around, it's quite, quite physically demanding. Uh, so I have to make sure that I take on the liquids and that I'm fit enough to do the job um, and run around the track all day long. But yeah, the heat aids is the main concern. But with the Sony gear, um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue, so we just sort of work through it and work around it effectively. So we're currently on the way to the next destination. Um, I thought rather than run around the entire track in five minutes, which, let's face it, is a nine impossibility, uh, we use my car. Um, so this is another way of how I go around the circuit. This is how I do most of my, my travel between sessions, is if I can't do um, two or three spots at the same time, because uh, obviously I've done the inside and the outside of the corner now. We're going around to a completely different spot. You can only drive around here if you've already got the um, go-ahead from the circuit official, so I wouldn't recommend bringing your car on a track day and then just driving around the track. Um, if you're here on a track day as a member of public, I'd say walk it because you might also find certain spots and angles which you might like. So yeah, this is where we're off to. We're going to the far side of the track to get some more shots for the next block of sessions which will start in approximately four minutes time. Imagine for racing, the 30 plus bikes coming down the corner curves, you lose them as you go around the old hairpin and they come back around just once, down Starkies, and then you see all 30 bikes appear there and just come flooding around here. The carnage is a high potential, uh, it doesn't always happen, but the noise that the 30 plus bikes make when they come around here and then heading up towards um, Coppice, McLean's Coppice. So as you come around McLean's, up towards Coppice, it's just phenomenal, it's such a cool sight. Um, so yeah, that's why this is one of my favorite spots to be at, really. Um, it's slightly different for track days, obviously, because with it's racing, you have a set start time, um, and you have 30 plus bikes starting at the same time on the starting grid, and they all come, well, they all race around the track. On a track day, you're here to ride it, so you can come and go as and when you please within your set session. So you'll never, it's rare that you get 30 plus bikes coming around the corner at the same time. For this session, I'll be shooting McLean's and Coppice during the same 20 minute block. Um, so I'll spend 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there because that's what I like to do. Because obviously I've got to shoot everyone as a track day photographer, you've got to shoot everyone as many times as you can so that they all have um, a good variety of angles and photos from their track day. So if I can cover as many spots during a single session as I can 
and then so on and so forth throughout the day. You know what I mean, the variety is more, and the chance of the riders getting and being happy with the photos are, are higher. But obviously, the, the slower they are, um, the less likely they are to be leaning off the bike and being as camera friendly sort of thing as the upper ones. But yeah, sort of shorter speed's different for the, for the lowers compared to the uppers. With the uppers, the lines are a lot more predictable than what the lowers are. They tend to have a better understanding of the braking points and where you can go quicker and slower. So they tend to lean off the bike a bit more as well. So to say camera friendly is the wrong, the wrong term, but the camera friendly effectively. So I was on 640th, but for some reason the the bikes aren't being fully focused, being yellow on a bright day. So I just bapped it up a little bit more, um, as well as the ISO to increase the f stop to try and give me an easy job of getting the bikes in focus. So I've now moved to the fourth location for the day, and that's Starkey's Bridge, which you can see just behind me. This is quite a fast part of the racetrack, um, so a lot of riders will be getting the knee down and potentially even some with their elbow down if we're lucky. So yeah, this will be quite, quite a good shot. This is one that I know a lot of riders like to get. So that's the primary reason why I'm here, um, to get that sort of an angle and that sort of a shot. I'm currently shooting in JPEG, um, and I know a lot of you are gonna be like, whoa, sort of thing, but hear me out. Um, on an average track day, I tend to shoot between six and a half thousand and seven and a half thousand images. So if that was raw, that'd be a hell of a lot of, of space and I'd go through SDs and memory blocks like there's no tomorrow. JPEG works for me because obviously they're a bit smaller file size and it's easy to upload straight onto the web. So it's a lot easier to, to for my workflow, it speeds up a hell of a lot amount. So as you can see, the bikes are out on track. So um, we're gonna go shoot this session and then we're on to the lunch break. So that's this morning's actions done. Uh, we're now on to the, the short lunch break. Uh, I'm currently downloading my SD card as we speak. This morning there's already 56.6 gigabytes worth of photos of JPEGs. So that's the main reason why I shoot JPEG. If I was to shoot like a portrait shoot or the stuff in the pit lane like I did this morning, I would then use RAW for that. Um, any other genre I will use RAW for. Another point while we're just on the break, because I know people ask what's the difference between the racing and the track day. Um, people tend to ask me, oh, do you find it easy to do racing or easy to do the track days? And the brutal honesty is, both are tough. You've got to make sure, the, for a track day, I have to make sure that I get everyone and get everyone as many times as I physically can and with a variety. Whereas over a race weekend, the paddock's even bigger, you get a paddock of around 400. And my job is to photograph everyone and my clients. So obviously people who pre-boot me, I focus on more throughout the weekend. Racing as well, I'll do certain shots at certain angles which I know won't work on a track day and vice versa. So it's sort of, there is a big difference for the logistics and the basics of the shutter speed, the, the whole sort of focal length, the f-stops, the apertures, the ISO settings will all vary depending on the weather, but they're all within the same sort of bubble of track day to racing. So it's just about like finding the settings that which work for you and using them and um, finding your own sort of style. So now that's that day done, uh, that was the WEX online masterclass of how to shoot motorsport photography. Before we sign off, I'm going to give you my final three tips of what I would say are key components to motorsport photography. The first one is good footwear. Now I know that's quite out there, but when you're running around a racetrack, sometimes the, the floor is quite uneven, quite rocky, and the last thing you want to do is damage your feet, and then that will hamper you in the long run. So get yourself some good shoes and get yourself something that's sustainable as well so they won't break within like an event and, and they need to be waterproof as well because in the UK we tend to get quite a lot of rain. Tip number two, ear protection. Um, as you may have noticed throughout this video I tend to have something in my ears. Uh, that's to protect my ears as I mentioned earlier because um, obviously they, it's quite noisy and you don't want any long lasting damage. So that's definitely tip number two because um, if you've got it with you you can always take it out whereas if you don't have it with you you can't put it in. And tip number three is your shutter speed. And I'd say always start high and work your way down. That way there, you'll get yourself some bankers. Um, not stupidly high, like one two thousandth of a second. Otherwise, you're just gonna see every single chain, de uh, chain detail 
and nobody wants to see that, that, see that as it looks like the bikes aren't moving. So I'd say start around an 800th of a second or a 640th maybe, depending on your capabilities sort of thing, and then slowly start bringing it down, bringing it down, and then just experiment and find a shot of speed which works for you. So keep the variety, keep, keep changing your shot of speed until you're happy. And yeah, that was the Wex Online Masterclass. I hope you learned something. And as a final point, I want to say a big thank you to Sony for the cameras and the lenses. They really are the best in the business. I'm Joel Cooper, Photography, and I'll catch you soon.